founder of Solana, it's a layer one blockchain solution, and now they even outperformed Ethereum in the number of daily transactions. And great to have you here, Anatoly. Yeah, thank you for having me. So can you tell us about your background and how did you get into crypto and how did you start uh, Solana? Sure, um, I'm an engineer. I spent most of my career at Qualcomm. I was there from uh, you know early two megabyte flip phone days till uh, when my team was leading uh, building augmented reality on a, this device called Project Tango for Google. And around 2017, um, I had like uh, the legendary Eureka moment, two coffees and a beer. And at 4 a.m. I had this realization that there's a way to encode passage of time as data. And that, that was the high level idea for proof of history, which later became the foundation of Solana. Yes, it's pretty interesting. And how did you find your co-founders? How did you? Um, so a lot of folks in those early days came from Qualcomm. I was lucky to have uh, a lot of friends uh, that were you know, experts in operating systems, GPUs, compilers to join me in those early days. So a lot of my you know, colleagues joined me and uh, we built Solana in about two years. Yeah, and now you're already in the top 10 on CoinMarketCap and doing such big progress. And considering your background as well in Qualcomm and te telecommunications, we have now a great news, your partnerships uh, with Helium. And Helium now uh, moves from their own blockchain to Solana and as well their uh, launching their own Korea network, the first uh, Korea network on blockchain. Uh, so can you tell us more about uh, your achievements and about this partnership? Yeah, um, this is something that we've always dreamed of. Uh, when we were building Solana, we talked to every major carrier, I think, in the United States and a bunch in, around the world about this idea that you can use blockchain to configure wireless networks and define software and run auctions and 5G hotspots and things like that. Um, but none of them really took off because these are really big organizations and move really slowly. And I'm really excited to see Helium disrupt all of them. Um, and doing that on Solana, I think, is the really, really exciting part to me. Um, what Solana offers Helium is uh, a rich smart contract environment where you can build all these mechanics for dynamic auctions, for hotspots, for using h and across DeFi and, and, and funding uh, future development. So really, really excited to see uh, how this plays out. So did uh, Helium reach out uh, to you first? Or how did uh, this partnership happen? Um, you know, myself and uh, Amir and Mark Nidem and a bunch of the Helium folks, we've known each other for a long time. Um, in fact, uh, at one point right before I started Solana, I was actually interviewed at Helium. So I've known that team really well. And uh, this is something that um, has always been uh, that something that I pitched to them. Like, why don't you guys uh, move to like an Oracle-based solution and do everything on Solana? And um, eventually, um, you know, as they progressed and build out their network, they realized that they're spending way too many resources on building the layer one versus the things that they want to do. So now it became the natural choice. So do you think it's your, it will be your biggest use case uh, for Solana? And uh, is it the most important use case? Um, that's hard to say. Solana is really growing in every direction. You know, there's been over 20 million NFTs minted. Serum does 20 million transactions per day. Um, what I really think uh, the possibility with Helium is, is it can be one of the most disruptive. Um, wireless networks and carriers are very entrenched big businesses, and there's no way they can move as fast as uh, you know, a decentralized group of very enthusiastic people. Like I think Helium might be the biggest 5G network in the United States. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> And uh, as well, you, you're growing your ecosystem, and now you have not only your layer one solution, but as well, you recently launched your own phone. So uh, what was the reason of such move? Well, the phone is a very, uh, it was very frustrating to me when I started building crypto, how little support there was in modern phones for, for crypto itself. And it's a very natural thing because self-custody and signing really requires secure hardware. And every phone in the world right now, you know, every, the phones that you hold in your hand are watching this on, they have the hardware to do secure signing. It's just the software is not there. So the Solana mobile stack enables secure signing inside the secure element on, on the device, plus a trusted display that guarantees that no application can fake your seed phrase or fake that signing experience. And it's really integrated into the OS itself. So you have a very awesome UX. You know, I want the, the signing experience to be like Apple Pay where it's just a very simple tap to pay 
and you sign and you get your NFTs or you get your Helium hotspot or whatever. So, do, do, will you use only your Solana Saga phone or will you use uh, other devices too in the future? I will probably only use the Solana Saga phone, uh, but it, this is the first time that I've seen on Twitter people post that they're going to give up uh, their iPhones for an Android device. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you have as well your own operation system in it? It's Android. So it's stock Android. If you're used to Android, it's exactly the same thing. It just has the secure signing for, uh, for crypto. Nice. And as well, so how many orders for your Saga phone do you have? Uh, so we're almost sold out of the developer kits. Um, so we have, uh, you know, the, both the hardware team and the software team are, are working day and night to get uh, all this stuff done before Breakpoint, and I think we'll have some of the developer devices available. Nice. So when do you plan to release those? Uh, so I think we'll have the devices for devs to play with a, a breakpoint and to test their applications. And we think the device will be ready Q1 uh, next year. And as well, recently you launched a uh, 100 million Solana venture fund, uh, specifically focused uh, on the Korean startups in Web3. So why do you see that region, uh, for the potential in that region? Oh, um, Korea has, I think, uh, a, one of the fastest growing uh, gaming industries like uh, in the world. Um, there's a lot of really talented young startups that uh, are moving really, really quickly and iterating quickly on, on game designs. And um, a lot of them are very open to having crypto deeply integrated in their games. Yeah, so what are the use cases for Solana and uh, what, is the, uh, what uh, number of uh, biggest uh, applications uh, building on Solana? So um, from a high level, our focus is uh, how do we enable more end users with self-custody to interact with, with these digital assets? We're not sure if it's going to be gaming, if it's going to be branding like OK Bears or gaming like Biomes or you know music NFTs or whatever. But the ultimate goal is how do we get end users with self-custody to uh, learn cryptography and learn how to hold digital assets and then you know, have fun with them. Um, I think gaming is one of these things that could uh, be a breakout use case over the next two years. Um, is the challenge is that it just takes a long time to build a good game. It's not like a you know, six month development cycle, it's usually uh, one to two years. Yeah, that's true. And can you share some projects that have been built on Solana about which you are really excited? I think the next one, uh, well, we just had a, a hackathon and there were over 700 teams. Uh, I suggest folks go look at the winners. Um, there's a lot of gaming, developer tooling, DeFi, NFT applications that the folks have built. Yeah, great. And as well, uh, now uh, you have uh, you built a layer two solution for Solana. <laughs> Besides, Solana is already highly scalable and uh, it's a bridge as well to Cosmos. Uh, so Nitro, can you tell more about this? Uh, that's not a Solana Layer 2. So it is using Solana technology as a Layer 2 for a Cosmos chain called Say. Um, and I'm really excited about Solana as a technology being used everywhere. Uh, because uh, from you know, my perspective, Solana is like Linux. Uh, there's a purpose that it's built for, which is to run a network. But mm -hmm. it's awesome that people take uh, pieces like C-Level, the, the runtime that powers Solana, and apply it to other technologies. And uh, as well, Solana has quite a big challenge with outages uh, because of the, the low fees of the transactions too. So do you plan in the future to make those fees higher? No, the, uh, the spam that we saw in the network uh, had nothing to do with fees. It had to do with uh, using raw UDP as the mechanism to receive transactions. Mm -hmm. So because there was no flow control, we were seeing over 100 gigabit of data hit validators. The main technology that's rolling out to address that is called Quick, and uh, it's already partially rolled out on Mena, just uh, optional. And we see that performance is awesome when, when people use Quick, and with the next release, it'll be the default. Yeah, hopefully it will be a, a, su a successful implementation. And can you share your thoughts? How do you see the current market? Um, I don't know. It's like uh, a lot of folks call it a bear market, but uh, I was in the bear market 2018, 2019, and this is quite different. Uh, we see like record numbers for registrations for hackathons, for teams entering the space and building new products. So to me, this feels more like a build market. Yeah, this is true. And uh, can you share what's the next for Solana? What's your upcoming plans? 
Ah, uh, man, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Breakpoint. Uh, I, I recommend folks uh, go pre-order Solana phone uh, at solanamobile.com or sign up for Breakpoint, the Solana conference. Okay. <laughs> so see everybody in Lisbon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for interesting conversation. For sure.